Okay, well, happy uh, Wednesday morning to you all. It's about 9.15 a.m., and uh, welcome to London, uh, uh, Houston, uh, uh, Katie. Jeez, this weather. It's been like this for three days now, four days. Cold, drizzly, miserable. I feel like I'm in London. Uh, okay, cold start, Navi. Typical routine. Fuel on, ignition on, choke on. <laughs> oh. Oh. Come on. Oh. See, that's a lot of cranking. Uh, I had some uh, wise acre saying, well, how do you know the fuel bowl was empty? That's how I know the fuel bowl was empty. You let it sit there. Fuel's going to evaporate out of the bowl after a couple of days, or in the heat especially. Uh... <laughs> on that previous cold start that I did in freezing weather, I uh, drained the bowl before I uh, killed it the previous night just to see how long it would run. I didn't mention that in the video. So sorry for you technical folk. And I've got a bump in this rear tire. Check that out. That's a big bump. wonder if it's uh, out of round or what the, what the hay we got going on there. I noticed a little bit of a bump in it before, but not that extreme. I wonder if that's road damage. I plan on replacing these anyway, but... There it is. Let it come back around. <laughs> I see you. Yeah, it's a... It's a big... I mean, it's not a bubble. It's just very out around. You see that? Oh, I'm probably not pointing you guys the right way. See that right there? That's a big dip in the tire. It's out around, and it doesn't look like it's sunken in on the rim right here. So it's just a... Watch it as it goes by. Doink. 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 Anyway, I'm going to be replacing these tires anyway. I don't like them. i got to go. People are waiting on me. I've got problems burning in uh, three or four different areas today. So I'm going to take the little Navi. Uh, 198.5 on the clicker. Uh, just a little under half a tank indicated. Not sure how accurate that is, but uh, we're going to take off and get her on the road. i got to get to my warehouse to meet somebody, and then uh, we'll go this way. Uh, and then I've got a scheduled appointment that I was supposed to be at already, like 8 a.m. this morning. It's already 9.15, 9.20. Uh, but I've been on the phone doing tech support for another customer who has uh, firewall and VPN issues this morning. And we're trying to figure out if it's their firewall or if it's uh, Xfinity getting in the way. It's chilly this morning. It's very humid, very moist. Humidity is probably up around 90% or better. And it's 50, 52 degrees. It's a little nippy. I might have to put on my over jacket. Oh, I didn't show you guys. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, I'm rocking the uh, backpack today because I'm carrying a couple of laptops and stuff. There you go. You can see it. Uh, I have not received my... I'm still on choke. I just took it off choke and it's trying to not run. Um, my rear rack for this was supposed to be in yesterday. I don't know if it arrived. They didn't have it as of like 3.30 yesterday, and I forgot to check back with them before closing time, but until I get a rear rack on this, I'm backpacking it. So that start routine that I just did, rolling it away, you know, a block or two on choke. Somebody had asked, can't you just roll it away with choke on? Yeah, you can, but it's going to start running like crap pretty quickly as the engine gets past that initial cold start period uh, because you're running way richer than it should uh, and in the case of uh, uh, carburetors that have got a plate I don't know if this one does uh, I haven't looked at the exploded diagrams still haven't uh, if you've got an enricher circuit it just runs rich but if you have the choke plate that closes off the venturi then you're actually starving the engine from air and uh, it doesn't run well at higher rpms because there's not enough air to feed the air pump so yes you can roll off uh, with the choke on get going and then turn it off as you go you just have to be mindful of that because if you still have the choke on and you've been running it hard or at high throttle uh, you have to remember you're putting way too much fuel in the system it's not good for your cylinder bore and the oil film in there too much fuel uh, can dilute your oil and cause problems uh, there's other mechanical issues, but I won't get into that.
<laughs> it is chilly. I might end up stopping and putting on my uh, over jacket. So I'm still not carrying uh, my reserve fuel bottle. I normally carry a uh, MSR or uh, Primus one liter fuel bottle uh, as an emergency spare on my smaller bikes, carbureted bikes, whatever. Uh, on a big bike, you know, that one liter is not going to get you very far. <laughs> if you're getting, you know, let's say 40 miles to the gallon on a big bike, uh, one liter, you're looking at a quarter of a gallon, you might get 10 miles down the road. And that's 10 miles that uh, I would rather not spend pushing, but usually it's not going to be that comfortable of a safety net. So, uh, on the little bikes, the you know, quarter gallon can get you right down the road, 25 miles or so usually, so it's not bad. Uh, anyway, I need to find a good spot to mount the uh, tool tube on this thing to hold that. Uh, I could just shove the fuel bottle down in there, but I think it might be a little bit too long uh, width-wise to lay down, and I don't really want it banging around in that storage box down there. Not to mention if you know it does happen to spring a leak, you don't get the cap on tightly enough, then uh, anything else you get in there is going to be uh, smelling uh, oud de petrol. So... I like to carry those uh, fuel bottles in a tool tube, uh, agricultural supply, uh, they call them tool tubes, they're really meant for like owner's manuals and things like that on tractors and uh, outdoor implements. They got a rubber uh, weatherproof seal on the top of it and usually you got a weep hole down to the bottom so if water does get into it, it doesn't just sit there and soak up the contents. But. Uh, no, look at this one. After I put the rear rack on here, there might be a couple of convenient spots uh, off the side of it to uh, hang a tool to, you know, secure it. Uh, I'm not a good metal fabricator, uh, so I'm not uh, handy with a welder or any of the cutting tools and all that. I just don't have the tools and haven't had the time to play with that. So I usually revert to... Uh, Stainless steel washers, rivets, uh, in some cases cable ties, but uh, usually I try to make it a little more permanent. And I'll find a spot on the bike where I can sandwich mount uh, a couple of uh, flat uh, stainless fender washers or something like that with a stainless rivet and cinch that puppy up. It's not coming loose. It's got, usually on the back of the tool tube, there are a couple of mounting holes and you just find a solid spot to screw that puppy down. <clears throat> Oh, no, nope, after you, after you, you go ahead. Trash guy's appearing out of the bushes here. And that's a strange place to leave him, but okay. Do -do. He's going that way, I'm going this way. So yeah, having a little bit of a safety net on this would be nice. Uh, I haven't done a full fuel exhaustion test on it yet. Uh, I will, <laughs> as soon as I'm carrying a fuel bottle. I'm doing that naked, thanks. Um, I'm kind of guessing the reserve is going to get about 15 miles, maybe. It's just a guesstimate uh, based on my current settings uh, and what I've been filling up uh, every time it sputters. I've been putting in about 0.7. Uh, give or take a tiny bit uh, after I've been on reserve and make it to a fuel station. So that leaves 0.2 uh, for a reserve, roughly, you know, assuming the bike is upright and not jostling and not sucking air through that uh, reserve nozzle. Uh, so 0.2 at, let's say, 90 miles to the gallon. So we're looking at about 15 miles. Rough math. You know. 15 miles of reserve. If you're in town, sure, you should be able to find a fuel station at 15 miles. If you're out on rural roads or highways or something like that, <laughs> good luck. Hell, I've gone 50, 60 miles at a stretch and not seen a gas station on my Super Cub. I was sweating out, let me tell you. I had a reserve bottle with me, but I knew the reserve was only going to get me about 20 miles. So I didn't want to dip into that and still be 20 miles away from nowhere. people in the comments are like we got these things called fuel stations you know yeah exactly and they're few and far between when you're out on the rural roads let me tell you are you really turning because you're going kind of fast mm -hmm. and now i get to uh, freeze dry my legs and my torso Woo i need that over jacket so 
I've been getting a lot of activity over on my Discord server that I set up. Uh, a lot of Navi owners have jumped over there and they're posting uh, pictures in my uh, Honda Navi channel. Uh, I've got a voice channel over there that I'm in occasionally, uh, but usually just hanging out in the text side of things. Text and, you know, pictures and whatnot. Anyway, uh, ZX Man on my uh, Discord server has been tearing his Navi to pieces uh, working on upgrades. He's already replaced his rear shock with something that he ordered, just a universal one, off of uh, eBay. And he said that's working out pretty well for him. Um, he found the rear shock a little bit too stiff or whatever, but he was able to adjust this universal one. It's got a piggyback reservoir on the whole bit, and it was only like 45 bucks. I don't know if that's with or without shipping, but that's cheap. 45 bucks, cool. Uh, anyway, he uh, also pulled his carburetor off and tore into the jets, and he's playing with uh, pilot jet, idle jet, different sizes. Ooh, I don't want over there. There's a stop truck. Um, he said that he got it performing better, but then uh, it was having trouble idling or something like that in cold weather, or that might have been another commenter. But uh, it seems like the idle issues on these and cold running are problematic. Uh, there have been other people commenting with same troubles. One uh, owner actually said screw it and took his back to the dealer, which I might end up doing with this one eventually, but uh, he took it back to the dealer and they're going to look into it, you know, figure out if it's a carburetor problem or uh, just tuning or what the deal is, but uh, I'll be interested to see how that turns out. So look in my uh, uh, YouTube about page and my bio information for all of the uh, social media links and whatnot and my discord uh handle is in there and you should be able to find my discord server and channels in there uh, i'll try to make another invite link and post it with this uh, video description uh, but the links are usually only good for seven days so uh, it's easier to just find my uh discord id i think it's quasi motard pound 4419 or something like that don't quote me i'll throw it up on the screen here uh anyway a lot, of, a lot of interesting discussion going on over there, and it's not really subject to moderation by the soulless digital sensors on uh, some of the other media platforms. None shall be named here. Um, but I'll be digging into mine soon, uh, playing with the carburetor, and uh, definitely want to do the uh, DC and LED conversion, uh, and ZX Man has done that on his. Uh, apparently it's, it's very simple, I just haven't gotten into it yet. I put my cruise control on. I didn't do a video on that, but I'll, uh, I'll pull it off and do another video. <laughs> They're so simple, you just clip it on. I did put the rubber band on this one because the grip was a little slippery, but it's giving me a little too much friction to set it, so I'll probably pull the little uh, tension band off of there and just put the cruise control back on the grip. Super simple. You roll it down to kill it. When you want to set it, you roll your throttle back and use your index finger to smash it down against your brake lever. That's it as simple as it gets and it's very easy to roll on so i'm set at kind of a middle throttle now and uh roll it on to accelerate let go it puts goes back right where it was so so i won't be taking the navi up on the highway anytime soon not until uh i can get a exhaust upgrade you know give it a tiny bit more power and definitely the variator upgrade because uh, on my weekend moto camping trip out there to uh, stephen f austin park in sealy uh, the best I could get on the uh, side highways was uh, 52, I guess, maybe, 53, so it kind of falls in line with the other top speed I got out of it. Uh, the more troubling point was on even some of the mild inclines, the best I could pull was 45, so that makes it a little problematic for back road uh, tripping and stuff like that that I typically do. You guys know my weird riding preferences uh so i don't know it may be with a variator upgrade and squeeze another horsepower out of this motor it might be able to do 55 steadily you know somewhat consistently if it can maintain no less than 50 uh, up some mild inclines then i think it would be okay so you can see the uh, fuel gauge drops pretty quick i was at just under the half mark when i left my house 15 miles ago something like that not even 15 miles maybe 12 uh, so i'm already dipping into the e uh, so that means this thing is about to sputter and go to reserve uh, i think i'm just going to head it off at the pass i'm going to go ahead and flip to reserve now because i don't want it to die in traffic like it has the last couple times uh, it would be problematic here on uh, 
fast access road could cause me some troubles. So I'm not gonna know where it sputters out this time. I don't really want to find out the hard way in traffic and it dies and I have to do a full stop on the side of the road in this traffic. Everybody jock in for the same spot. Hurry up to wait, dumbasses. So I'm not tapped out, but I'm running about 90% throttle, and it settles in about 47 miles an hour, indicated. It's a good little surface street tool, you know, around town, but you get it on the faster roads, it's going to be out of its depth. And I know a lot of people are watching this, probably going, well, it's not made to do that. I know, I know. But that's what I do with it, and it's mine, so I'm showing what I do with it. And I think it'll be kind of relevant to people that want to use these as commuters, because you're going to end up with fast traffic and faster roads, no matter how small your town is. You know, 45 mile an hour roads, it's not uncommon. So you're just pushing the, the speed limit at, you know, 47. Uh, and whatever the speed limit is doesn't mean that's how fast people are going. They're probably going at least 5 to 10 over that, which is pretty typical everywhere. So if you got a 45 mile an hour road, that means everybody's cooking along 55. So I think these, uh, these tests and little caveats here are relevant to the discussion. So as it's uh, getting broken in, you know, closer to 300 mile mark, you can tell I'm not being as nice to it. I try to be nice to them for the first, you know, couple hundred miles. 300 miles is kind of what the official uh, break-in period is, but uh, it's... Uh, really up to your riding habits and where you need to move around because real world scenarios you can't avoid using full throttle on these uh, <laughs> just getting accelerated and up and out of the way of traffic uh, means you're going to be cranking it open and uh, speeding up slowing down speeding up slowing down yeah that might be okay in a neighborhood but you get out on a major street you can't do that unless you want to get run over you're going to have to ride it like you stole it smaller scoots, anything under about 150 cc's, they usually live their life at wide open throttle. At least during acceleration runs and then you back out a little bit, but yeah, it's uh, pretty much an all or nothing affair. Ooh, can he make the light? Can he make the light? Get out of that lane because I see people staging to try to squeak it. No road pancakes for me. Uh-oh. It has pretty decent roll on from 35 to 45 if you open it all the way up. It it pulls right up. It just tapers off right around 45 and if you want that last five miles an hour it takes a while to get there. But yeah, roll on from uh, 35, 40 range up to 45. It still, still has a little bit of poke. It's okay. It's good for blending in traffic. I still haven't had time been busy. Uh, I had time to pull the uh, signals out of this and the uh, tail light to figure out what uh, bulb base they are. I'm sure other people have done it already. You could probably tell me. Uh, I'll try to try to do that or at least pass on the information that I'm receiving from others. Help the community. Get our Navi fam uh, all hooked up and blinged out. I don't treat LED lights and things like that as bling. I treat them as safety items. So. Uh, in my opinion, they are a mandatory upgrade on pretty much any bike that has incandescent bulbs, halogen bulbs. I just don't, uh, don't like the old tech. The world is moving too fast and frantic, so you need to be more visible than you used to be 20, 30 years ago. And that is old tech, man. So when I leave the warehouse, <laughs> trying to watch the road, uh, you can tell I am going to need fuel. I am down at the bottom of the red on the E now, so I have no idea how much further this goes. It's, uh, it's fuel time. Without a reserve bottle, parking on the side of the road is a distinct possibility. So as an overall commuter, uh, I've asked, been asked for a lot of comparisons between the PCX and the Super Cub and some of the others. Uh, the Navi is nowhere near as efficient, not even close. And a lot of people are saying, yeah, well, that's to be expected. It's a carbureted bike. Mm. 
I beg to differ. Uh, older Honda scooters uh, that were not fuel injected did pretty decent on fuel, and you got to think this is only a 110 cc. Uh, it's not a big engine, so it's not sucking that much air and fuel through there. But um, anyway, I've been asked for a lot of comparisons, you know, between the other Honda scooters and Mini Motos uh, that I own. At, as, to see where the Navi fits into that equation. And uh, it's great, it's a cheap runaround, but as a overall commuter, I think you would be much better served with uh, PCX150 uh, because it's got a lot more power, a lot more creature comfort. Uh, it's just, you know, it's a more advanced machine. And obviously, yes, I know, it's much more expensive. Uh, you could get two of these for the price of one PCX almost. But, uh, I don't know, you know, if you find a used PCX, I guess that would be the real discussion. Used PCX or used Grom or used Super Cub versus the Navi, you're probably getting into the price range where one of those used bikes would give you a better overall ownership experience and usability, functional, functionality than uh, the Navi. So uh, just, you know, jump on and hit the start button and it's always going to start. Uh, never have to mess with a choke. Uh, much better fuel economy. This kind of uh, speeds in the, the riding I'm doing right here on my PCX 150s uh, would yield at least 115 to 120 miles to the gallon minimum. So they're already 50% better than what this is doing, and they've got larger engines. Of course, they're fuel injected, water cooled, all that. So different technology, but still in a, an overall usability and functionality comparison. Uh, I think a used PCX is probably a better commuter than something like this. Uh, assuming you can find one used for a good price. Anyway, uh, I'm going to shut this down. I've got to go in and uh, grab some stuff for today's troubles and uh, get rid of these laptops on my back. I'll catch up with you later. Okay, so I just pulled into a Shell station here on the way from my warehouse over to a client's office to feed this thing because it is uh, deep, deep into the red, and I don't want to run out of fuel on the road. I'm already on reserve. <laughs> I switched it to reserve earlier in traffic because I didn't want to take a chance on it coughing and sputtering out and taking 8 to 10 seconds to reprime like it did uh, rolling last time. Not a good idea in fast traffic. I think got stuck. Didn't want to come off right then. What the hell was that? Anyway, people have been telling me that this is a fuel cap holder. Yeah, I don't want to put it there, though, because the bottom of this thing is drippy, and it's just going to make a mess. I do that because I'm doing this back and forth, and I know that I've got to finish that thought. Would I like a car wash today? <laughs> no. Cheapo. It's normally $2.85. I get $0.05 cents off. <laughs> Aren't I special? Okay, so here we go. What do I got in the tank? Yeah, that... Oh, you guys may not be able to see that. I can kind of sort of see it. There's a little bit of fuel left in there, but it looks like it's getting down to the metal. So as a commuter, you're going to be doing a lot of very frequent refuels on the Navi. Uh, only getting 80-ish miles before you got to start thinking about uh, feed, feeding this thing, filling it up. Okay, so I'm just over the top of the bar, where I have been many times before. 0.7 gallons, so I had point two still left in there so I might be able to get another 15 miles out of that uh, uh, 10 miles let's say out of that reserve but again I don't want to push it and I went one penny over it's all right I'm gonna leave it right there I'm gonna keep this test scientific yeah I'm OCD if you can't tell I always try to round it off to the nearest five cents 25 cents if I can do it yes I want a receipt calculate these numbers real quick throw them up on the screen you guys get to see it through the magic of editing and I'm gonna get on the road thank you <laughs> yeah thank you for no receipt damn okay next best thing 201 716 or 716 anyway it was 280.9 not 285 9 and here are my miles. My miles. Not spectacular fuel mileage. So back to the uh, how is the Navi as a commuter and a runaround tool. PCX is definitely kicking its butt. So is the uh, Super Cub for that matter. Uh, got my keys, got my card, got my stuff, got my brain. No, left the brain at home. Off I go, and flip that fuel from on to, or reserve to on, don't forget that, guys. 
if I can get it. Ah, there we go. Got it. All right. No cars. Me. Mine. Go. Yeah, so for uh, bashing around town, stoplight, stoplight, it's okay. Uh, but you are going to be stopping a lot more frequently for fuel than you would on a PCX uh, or even the Super Cub. Because the Super Cub in this kind of surface street running around is doing... Uh, 120 to the gallon so is the PCX for that matter so Super Cub and PCX both are whooping up on the Navi as far as economy and they've got larger engines so that brings me back to like the ideas for DoorDash and things like that people have been asking how would it be as a delivery vehicle I think it'd be great uh, but not as good as a few of the other smaller bikes in Honda's uh, lineup now of course this is going to be the cheapest one by far uh, cheaper initially uh, as far as total cost of ownership fuel charges all that stuff I don't know the jury's out on that I'm gonna have to give it several months or a year to kind of project some numbers and see how it turns out I think long term best around town commuter bomber is still going to be the uh, PCX it's efficient capable 2.1 gallon tank so you're looking at uh, roughly 200 miles between the fills so, so it's got some legs and I'm shivering it's cold oh my god all right well I'm gonna shut the video down here uh, I'm gonna roll into my client site and try to make some money to pay for my natty <laughs>